In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the delivery of a bespoke training program in brachial plexus reconstruction for a resource-limited country, our experience in Cambodia. It's a design and developmental project that we have conducted since 2013. My name is Vaikuntan Rajaratnam. I'm a hand surgeon, a medical educator, and an instructional designer practicing in Singapore. Cambodia has a population of close to 17 million and 50% of whom are under 22 years old. Motorcycle remains the main mode of transport, but Cambodia has a reputation of holding the largest causes of death due to motorcycles in Southeast Asia. Motorcycle accidents are the main cause of brachial plexus injuries in developing countries. The impact of brachial plexus injury are very significant due not only to the paralysis of the upper limb with physical limitation, but the severe psychological stress secondary to the flail upper limb and pain, social discrimination due to a paralyzed limb and economic hardship. These young patients who are usually affected, especially in Cambodia, resulting in the inability to return to gainful employment and work produces significant impact in the community. The flail upper limb results in a useless limb and becoming a nuisance which tends to produce a need for a amputation of the limb with the fusion of the shoulder to allow them to use uh, one arm to continue with the activities. Five billion people in the world have no access to optimal surgical care. One of the solutions that has been proposed in a Lancet paper has been surgical volunteerism, which needs to be free willed with no material reward by the uh, surgeons involved in the provision of service. And it is rooted on the desire to be altruistic, which is a characteristic of the professional nature of a surgeon. It requires a commitment and dedication for long term. In 2013, a team of surgeons from the United Kingdom and Singapore designed and developed a program for hand surgery training in Cambodia. The model was based on the concept of surgical volunteerism and the foundation was based on the identification of local surgeons who were committed in the training and then to use an evidence-based approach towards uh, designing and developing a curriculum with specific and targeted skills acquisition program with the support of the faculty from the international community. This was further enabled by the use of technology and has resulted in very satisfactory transfer of skills to the local surgeons. And this has been published in our In designing the training program from ham surgery, an instructional model of using the ADDIE or ID model was used. A curriculum was designed based on the needs of the community using evidence-based approach on the various types of procedures that were done locally, and then developing a personalized training program based on knowledge and skills supported with feedback and deliberate practice under direct supervision from the international faculty and then producing assessment tools based on direct observation of procedures while being supervised by the faculty. The program was then evaluated based on the stakeholders to produce an evidence approach to the effectiveness of the program. In designing the curriculum, there was need to discern the needs of the community and this was performed by the visiting surgeon in the initial phase of the project by visiting the center and looking at the learning needs both from the community by and doing a Pareto analysis of the commonly pr procedures performed at the center. This allowed for the development of a targeted training program that is based on competency and identification of the skills that were required to be able to produce competent surgeons to practice independently. Assessments were then designed based on the practice of the individual surgeons at the workplace. 
This table shows the preliminary assessment of the number of cases that were operated during the initial trips by the hand surgeon to show the type of needs in the community. As you can see, brachial plexus accounted for about 16% of the population that required this reconstructive surgery. The development of the curriculum was based on the analysis of the needs and this table shows the various components of the curriculum for hand surgery training in Cambodia. As you can see that the nerve uh, section on brachial plexus required the design and development of a microneural workshop uh, catering to the local needs and the time frame required to provide independent competent surgeon was about two years. To analyze the learning needs of the surgeons, we identified surgeons who were committed and would remain in the program over the five-year period. And we had to assess the skill level of individual surgeons and then develop a personalized training program for each and every of the surgeons who were identified. They were shown and demonstrated the various skills on patients under the supervision and then provided deliberate practice with supervision and support until independent practice was achieved. In order to evaluate the program of surgical training at the end of three years, we performed an assessment of the identified surgeons on their level of confidence before, after, and for the future. The objectives of this training was to ensure that the surgeons who were trained were able to teach others to allow for capacity building. And as you can see that we were successful in increasing the confidence level to perform independently. The detailed personalized programs, and this shows the uh, methodology used to deliver the program. Uh, for the assessment of brachial plexus injury, we use case-based discussion to develop higher order thinking, especially decision making and planning for surgical management. Surgical option generations were done through lectures and case-based dis discussions. The selection and execution of the uh, procedures were done under supervision with direct observation of procedures being done by the faculty until a level of competency was achieved, following which independent practice was allowed with the visiting surgeon unscrubbed. Deliberate practice and feedback was provided through the use of technology when the surgeons had returned to their, host, uh, their original countries through the use of videos and uh, 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 WhatsApp messaging to provide the scaffolding required to support these surgeons. Independent performance and assessment were performed through work-based assessment, especially the use of direct observation of procedures. The support of the local uh, hospitals and uh, stakeholders was crucial in delivering this program and one of the important skill acquisitions for brachial plexus was the microneural workshop which was conducted very early on in the project and the use of the facilities locally especially with the use of 12 microscopes allowed for the capacity building of surgeons the recruitment of surgeons who were committed to do microneural repair were done through uh, a competition to see how they had the ability of uh, fine motor skills. A uh, standardized program was used with low cost, high fidelity biological models using the trotters uh, nerves in the uh, PIC model was used. Based on the needs and available local resources, this was the reconstructive strategy that was developed initially for the local surgeons to be able to practice. In pan plexus injury with complete flail upper limb for shoulder abduction, spinal accessory nerve to suprascapular nerve transfer was uh, used and the participants were trained in this. For elbow flexion, phrenic nerve with the use of pseudo nerve graft to the branch of the biceps was used. Long phrenic nerves were attempted uh, as harvested from the phrenic nerve uh, from the diaphragm and then transferred to the biceps. However, the results were not encouraging and has been abandoned. For hands, sensation and an attempt at finger flexion 
contralateral C7 was used to innovate the median with the use of a vascularized ulna nerve graft, and this was taught in the later part of the training program to provide the complete reconstruction of the upper limb. The total time for these was considered to be about four hours of surgery, but for the all three, including hand sensitization, it took about eight hours with three teams performing the surgery. For upper plexus injuries, uh, which were not that common, and we, uh, attending the clinic within six months of injury, the strategies for shoulder abduction was spinal accessory for suprascapular, and if the triceps uh, was working to transfer the triceps branch of the uh, radial nerve to the axillary nerve. For elbow flexion and obelin transfer using either the FCU branch of the ulnar nerve or the FCR branch of the median nerve, and in both were available to be transferred to the brachi biceps and the brachialis. The purposes of this was to use to convert a weak limb to a useful limb. This graph shows the distribution of the types of cases seen during the uh, first few years of the program in Cambodia. In this slide, you can see two years post-injury, the outcome of the surgery for the pan plexus injury. This was followed up with fusion of the wrist and a, t uh, a tendon uh, stabilization of the fingers to allow for assisted living of a pan plexus injury, which is the purpose of surgery in pan plexus is for assisted living. The results of this work has been published in Tropical Doctor showing the new model for surgical volunteerism and I think this is an important concept that needs to be used to allow for a targeted training and transfer of skills to developing countries where surgical expertise is limited. It is important to use an evidence-based approach and a commitment from both the local stakeholders and the visiting faculty to provide for this transfer of skills and knowledge. It is important also to train the cohort of local surgeons who are competent and who are committed to train the future generation for sustainability capacity building in the local community. We publish our experience on brachial plexus reconstruction, and this is the first paper that we are aware of where we re reported the experiences of both patients and surgeons for reconstruction of brachial plexus injury in resource limited countries. The QR code is the video of the interview with two patients who underwent uh, brachial plexus reconstruction, the basis of this paper. We've also reported on the uh, development of hand surgery in Cambodia uh, with the review article in the Journal of Hand and Microsurgery. Thank you and goodbye.